stop making these mistakes in Unreal Engine 5. You've poured in hours or even days into your Unreal Engine 5 project. And then you press play and it looks like a flash animation running at 12 frames per second. Or worse, it crashes. As you slowly work at it, your dream game starts to become a nightmare. And the last one on this list is probably the biggest mistake that you're making in Unreal Engine. What's up everybody? If you're new to UE5, then you're in for a treat. Unreal Engine 5 is a powerful tool, but with great power comes... Well, a lot of ways to shoot yourself in the foot. Countless developers are still making the same fundamental mistakes in Unreal Engine 5, leading to frustration, wasted time, and games that just don't perform. So today, we're going to cut through the noise, and I'm going to tell you the 10 most common mistakes that you're making in Unreal Engine 5. We'll break down what they are, why they're so damaging, and most importantly, how to fix them. Make sure you stick around to the end, because you will have a roadmap for a smoother and more successful Unreal Engine 5 journey. Mistake number one is lack of planning, but you need to give your game a soul before you give it a body. I've got your soul, brother! Unreal Engine 5 is a blank canvas and that's amazing, but this can also lead to scope creep, unbalanced mechanics, and ultimately unfinished projects. You get drawn to the coolest features and latest assets without really taking into consideration if it falls into your game's core vision. So how do we fix this? Well, you're going to use a game design document. This is a document that knows everything about your game and it's an easy way for you to communicate to other people, specifically investors or other team members, what your game's going to look like. You'll talk about story, music, art, different mechanics, different systems, and the best part about this is this can change throughout your entire project. You're never locked into a game design document the first time you make it. It's constantly evolving and changing as your project changes. But the best part about a game design document, it breaks things down into smaller tasks. And if you're someone like me who uh, gets distracted easily, it's really, really good. So ultimately, do the game design document, break things down into smaller tasks, prioritize gameplay over flashy visuals, and you'll be right on your way. Mistake number two, a disorganized content drawer. If when you open your content drawer, you have blueprints, textures, materials, sounds, and just all jumbled up together where it looks like a disorganized teenager's room, that's a bad thing. This isn't just untidy. It leads to disorganization, higher load times, and just disorganization. It's going to make finding absolutely anything a nightmare, including help, because if somebody comes to help you on your project, opens your content drawer, and it looks like a junk drawer, well, they're not going to stick around for too much longer because they know that you have no idea what you're doing. Unreal Engine 5 is built for massive projects and teams, and having poor organization is really going to cripple your scalability. So, how do we fix this one? Well, from day one, you need to have a hierarchical system in your content drawer. Think blueprints, assets, maps, materials, all that kind of stuff. Use a naming system for everything and stick with it. So you want BP Apple, Blueprint Apple, or BPI, Blueprint Interface, Interact, or whatever. And just to top it off, even if you're a solo developer, number 10 on this list is really huge. Number three on this list is Blueprint Abuse. Now, this type of abuse won't land you in court, but lots of new users use Blueprints every day for everything that they do. However, what seems to happen is they overload these blueprints with overly intensive logic. And blueprints run in a virtual machine, meaning that they have a per node overhead. This can lead to significant CPU bottlenecks, which can reduce performance and ultimately slow down your project. So the fix for this is not to just use C++ entirely. Blueprints do have their strengths. It's good to know what their strengths are. You need to constantly profile your game, find those CPU bottlenecks that are in Blueprints, and then move that part of the code over to C++, whether you need to get help with that or if you want to learn C++ on your own. Don't be afraid to move code over to C++. Remember, there's no trophy for making a game exclusively in Blueprints, but there is a trophy for best game. Mistake number four. So we have a joke in the film industry uh, where we will fix it in post. And uh, this is essentially the game development equivalent of that, where we'll optimize later. That's bad. Many developers dazzled with uh, Unreal Engine 5's visuals uh, will neglect optimization from the start and just say we'll fix it with Nanite later. But performance issues are almost always a developer issue, not an engine issue. This can lead to lags, crashes, and games only being able to run on the lowest possible setting. I remember when City Skylines 2 came out, that game chugged on my computer to the point where I actually upgraded my GPU to a 4070 from my absolute dinosaur 1660 Ti. But after I installed my new GPU, I noticed that the game was still chugging on the lowest settings, which means that the game itself was not optimized. But I mean, at least I got a new GPU. The fix for this one is definitely going to take the most of your time. 
Optimization is an ongoing process, and you need to integrate continuous profiling with tools like Unreal Insights, Stat Unit, and Profile GPU. Learn fundamental optimization techniques with Structured Courses or my channel. And critically, always test your game on other machines, not just your beast rig. Although, if you want to show me your beast rig, I got a channel for that in my Discord. If you want to join a bunch of game devs in my Discord, uh, we can help you guys out on your projects, debug some stuff. Great place to be. Consider joining the realm, and if you guys have liked this video so far, give it a thumbs up, support what I do. Mistake number five is the more is better with assets. You grab those amazing assets from Fab, and you throw them in your project, and you think UE5 is just going to handle it. But without proper optimization, these assets are going to cause your game to run slower, render slower, just be slower in general. Nanite is powerful, but just because it could run a million billion triangles or whatever, doesn't mean you should. The fix for this one is, well, well it's easy, but it's, it t still takes time. You want to reduce the poly count on all of your meshes, use normal and roughness maps to add extra detail to your mesh without actually adding geometry, be smart with your materials and shaders, don't use overly complex logic where you don't need to, understand specific use cases and limitations for features like Nanite or Lumen, and test on different hardware. Number six is tick overload. Not that tick. This one. The event tick function runs every single frame, and while that's not inherently evil like a lot of people make it out to be, it runs a bunch of work per frame per actor, or having a lot of event ticks running, this will tank your performance in your game. Even seemingly small operations on event tick, multiplied by hundreds of actors, will cause a CPU bottleneck. So the fix for this one, you need to ask yourself every time you were going to put something on event tick, does this need to work on every single frame, or can it be run with event-driven logic, or timers? For many similar actors, it's better to use instances such as master materials and then instance those materials, etc, etc, just to remove the amount of actual ticks running. And if you don't need the tick at all, just disable it. Mistake number seven is rendering what you don't see. Many new developers either forget or don't even know about level of detail or calling. Forgetting this means that your game is going to be rendering high poly objects that aren't even on screen. This wastes precious computing power and it's not out of sight, out of mind in this case. The fix for this one is implement LODs in your game. You can find LODs in the static mesh menu and you can create as many as you want. I mean, usually you want, you know, four to six. And basically it'll just decimate the poly countdown uh, so it doesn't have to render as many triangles in the game when it's farther away. You also want to use call distance volumes. This stops Unreal Engine from rendering objects at a certain distance. And make sure you optimize your particle systems so that they're not rendering if they're off screen or if they're really far away that they're not getting rendered as heavily. Number eight is overlighting and over processing. It's easy to throw a bunch of lights in and just try to make the scene to look good, but you need to remember that graphics play the biggest role in performance in your game. Lots of light paired with high pros processing, it's not good. So the fix for this one, uh, make sure any lights that aren't moving in your scene are set to static. Uh, that way it is going to be significantly computationally less than if you have a dynamic light. Use dynamic shadows only when required because those are really expensive as well. Be selective with your post-processing effects. A little goes a long way and you want to balance visual fidelity with a stable frame rate. Mistake number nine is not testing your game while you develop it. This is a huge mistake. Bugs and gameplay issues, if not found early, are going to cause major issues down the line. It can lead to crunch, broken features, and poor player experience. So the fix for this one is play your game, get other people to play your game, Join my Discord because I have a channel on there for all of us to play your game and test your game out and give you guys feedback. But you need to test your game through every stage of development and just get lots of feedback. Number 10, the big one. No version control. Well, have you know that I don't need version control because I'm a solo developer. Wrong! You do need version control. Version control will help keep track of your project off of your computer, so if anything were to happen, such as your hard drive dies, you implement a mechanic that now is very, very difficult to change and it just completely screwed your project. If you're working with a team or one of the team members' hard drive crashes and corrupts a bunch of files, you need some way to go back to previous versions and ultimately save your progress. By not having version control, you're risking losing hours, days, or even your entire project. Add some redundancy to your project and the added bonus, you can also work in teams. Fix for this one is super easy. Just get version control, get GitHub, Perforce, Diversion, whatever one you want. Implement it today, learn how to use it, learn how it works, and it's going to save your ass in the long run. Having this offsite backup for redundancy is just going to... Peace of mind. Trust me. If you want to continue to learn about optimization, you can watch this video up here where we're going to show you how to optimize your HUD like a AAA game dev. If HUD is completely new to you, you can watch this other video which will show you how to make HUD from scratch as a complete beginner. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe if you want to become a better game dev with me and keep learning Unreal Engine 5. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Take care.